Hello everybody, this is Gamergar, welcome back to another video of Stardew Valley. For today's video we are going to bring you through a guide on recipes. We are going to go over some really cool recipe combinations that you can set up for yourself in this game that will greatly enhance the way you play the game. We're going to start off with some beginner recipes, then work through some mid-tier recipes and then we're going to show you some really cool end game recipes. Let's start with some really nice buff foods that you can get your hands on really early in the game that will give you a significant edge. Let's start with the hash browns. You just need potatoes and oil to make these. Hash browns are amazing as a starter recipe. The best thing about hash browns is that you can get them off Gus for only 50 gold. You can also learn the recipe on the 14th of spring in year 2. They also give you a nice amount of energy and health, but more importantly to give you plus 1 to farming. Now plus 1 to farming might not seem like a lot, but when you're just starting out in the game and you're looking for those those 5 golden crops for your community centre bundles, that plus 1 to farming could save you to purchase an extra crop or two from Pierre. So it's definitely worth your while to pick up some hash browns before you go harvest your crops if you're going for those community centre bundles, or even if you just want to make a profit. You'll easily get your 50 gold back that it cost you to buy that hash brown if you pop that before you harvest all your crops. Easy. Next up, let's talk about the pepper poppers. A hot pepper and a cheese is all you need to make these. Now you do need cheese, so you do need animals. However, the plus two farming and plus one speed is just too hard to ignore. All you need is three hearts with the lovely Shane. Shane is a very easy NPC to accumulate hearts with. Just give him pizza or bear and he is good to go for you. It also gives a nice bit of energy and health, but that plus two farming is amazing. What a lot of people do, is, including myself, is try to make the recipe as early as possible in the game. If you have the house upgrade and you can craft it, good for you. The plus two to farming will get you a lot more profit for your crops, because it will increase the odds of you getting gold star crops, just like the hash brown, except it's more potent and it also gives you a speed buff, so you move even faster. So pepper poppers are amazing. Next up, let's talk about the tamcha soup. A coconut, a shrimp and a common mushroom is all you need to make this. So if you have the mushroom cave, you're sorted. You can easily get shrimp from the crab pots and you can get coconuts out in the desert. It gives a whopping 175 energy when you eat this. It gives 78 health plus 2 to farming and even increases your maximum energy by 30. Now you do need 7 hearts with Sandy to get this, so this isn't something that you're probably going to have come spring or even summer. You know, a lot of people might not even get this until year 2. But if you can access the desert early and if you get Sandy up to 7 hearts, she will teach you this recipe. And it isn't the hardest recipe to make. The plus 2 farming is nice, just like the pepper poppers, but it gives max energy plus 30. That, come, that can come in real handy later on. Next up, let's talk about how we can utilize fishing and put that into our lovely recipes. Let's look at the trout soup. A rainbow trout and a green algae is what we need to make a trout soup. Why is the trout soup so good? It's because the higher your fishing skill is, the bigger the fishing bar you get. Now, the trout soup gives 100 energy, 45 health, but more importantly, we take it to get the plus one in fishing. Now, you can get it from the Queen of Sauce, the seventh of fall, year one. However, you can also buy trout soup from Willy in his shop anytime that you wish. So if we take a look at the trout soup here, it's actually one of the best fishing buffs you're gonna get early in the game. And you can simply just get it off Willy. And what makes it so handy is the size of the fishing bar that it activates for you. Just look at our fishing bar here at the moment. It's much bigger now because we have the plus one to fishing. And what's really handy about this too is that fishing is actually pretty hard in this game early on because your bar is so small. And some of the fish can be quite meddlesome to get. It does get easier as you play, but getting the plus one to fishing does make a huge, huge difference. So you can't ground with the trout soup. Speaking of fishing buffs, let's talk about the lobster bisque. Now the lobster bisque requires lobster of course, but it also requires any type of milk, so you need animals to make this one. It does boast however a whopping 225 energy when you take it. It gives plus 3 to fishing and it even increases your maximum energy by a whopping 50. Now, you can get it from the Queen of Sauce in year 2, but you'd probably want to get it off Willy in year 1. Now, you do need a good few hearts with Willy, but it's definitely worth it considering the plus 3 fishing that it gives you is really good. And the extra max energy for the few hours that you have the buffer can also come in really handy as well if you have to do other activities around your farm, or even if you just wanted to fish like an absolute 
crazy fisherman. <laughs> the lobster bisque is one of those foods that I always try to get as quickly as possible because plus three to fishing means I have a much bigger fishing bar. That means I can tackle the harder fish the game has to offer and I'll have a much, much better chance to catch those fish without failing and having to try over and over again. So you absolutely can't go wrong with nice buff fishing food like that. Next up, let's talk about the sea foam pudding. Now, to make the sea foam pudding, you need plus nine in fishing to learn the recipe, but it is worth it because it gives a whopping plus four to fishing, which means you're going to have a much bigger catch bar. Now, to make it, you need a flounder, a midnight carp, and a squid ink. Best way to mass produce these is to just build some fish ponds, put a flounder in one, a midnight carp in the other, and a squid or the midnight squid into the other one, and you can make these as much as you want. The great thing about the sea foam pudding is that it also allows you to catch the iridium crobus as you need a very high fishing skill to reach out and pull that out of the water and it is one of the best fishing buff, buff foods you will get in the game. Next up, let's talk about combat related foods. There's lots of nice combat related foods in the game but first up we're going to talk about the bean hot pot. What makes the bean hot pot so great? Well. Basically, it's the magnetism buff that it gives you is really, really good. So, it gives you plus 32 magnetism. It also increases your max energy too, which is really nice. And it gives a nice bit of energy and health. You just need seven hearts with good old Clint there to make this. And let's just blow up a few things in the mines here now. And I'll look at all the items that just fly on over to us. This is a huge time saver. So, if you haven't been hot pot lying around your farm, don't keep it in the chest. If you're going down to the mines or if you're going somewhere harvesting materials, take a nice bean hot pot for yourself because it basically serves as an extra magnet ring. It's especially handy if you're going through caves like this with bombs and you're just blowing things up. We got super lucky here actually, we got two diamonds on the same floor. <laughs> but it is an absolutely magnificent item that um, you should make if you have the mat sign around. The primary resource to make one of course are beans, <laughs> hence the name, the bean hot pot. Next up, let's talk about the eggplant farm. To make an eggplant farm, you just need eggplant and a tomato. You can grow those no problem on the farm. Now it gives nice energy and health, but more importantly, you're getting plus one to mining, which is very nice indeed for mining proficiency, but also plus three to defense. Defense is a really important stat in Stardew Valley, especially if you're going into the caves that had the harder enemies, such as the Skull Cavern such as the hardened versions of the mines and even the hardened versions of Skull Cavern. The defense buff is always welcomed. Now some people prefer going over an extra attack buff, but if you're not the most comfortable with combat or if you're lacking in combat skill, piling on extra defense will make life much easier for you. And what I normally go with myself when I go for dungeon runs is that I go for a high attack power weapon, but then a high defense ring combination. Just so I have nice all-out stats. Good offense, good defense. Makes for an all well-rounded cave crawler like myself. What's also great about the egg farm here is that the defense buff is so good that if you combine this with really good boots and if you combine this with even defense rings, enemies will hit you for almost nothing. Some enemies will even hit you for just one damage. Some enemies can hit you from between five and ten damage, but in the grand scale of things, that's not a whole lot of damage at all. It is an absolutely magnificent damage mitigator. Uh, it's one of the best buff moves you can bring in with you if you're lacking in offensive capabilities or even if you're just lacking in health or if you're just lacking in HP. So as we can see here now, I'm going to slay serpents in a skull cavern and the buff food makes it much easier to manage. The next buff food we're going to talk about today is the squid ink ravioli. To make one, you just need a squid ink some wheat flour and some tomatoes. Now it does give plus one to mining, it gives a bit of energy and help when you take it too, and to learn it you just need mining level nine. What makes this buff food so unique is the buff it actually gives. The buff is called the squid ravioli buff. Now this buff is very simple but it's very overpowered. It basically makes you immune to debuffs. Any sort of debuff from any sort of enemy. If you take this item you will not get debuffs, period. That is better than all of the immunity combined in this game. It is one of the most overpowered food recipes you can take before going into any sort of a dungeon. Look at this this fire enemy here, this magma sprite. You know, how many times has he hit me? I got no debuffs. The slimes could hit me, I'll get no debuffs at all. Any sort of enemy can hit me, and any sort of enemy that could land a debuff 
simply won't. Next up, let's look at the starter, middle tier and end tier foraging food items you can get. Starting with the lovely pancakes, of course. All you need to make a pancake is wheat flour and any sort of egg and that will do the job for you, no problem. Take the pancake and you will increase your foraging level by a two. That's actually pretty good. Now, you can buy the pancake from Ghost for 100 gold. You can also learn it in the 14th of summer year one. What makes the pancake so good early on is that if you get your foraging up to certain levels, you will unlock foraging perks where you can forage more items from bushes. You can also forage higher quality items from the ground. So at the moment we have bushes here filled up with salmon berries. You can actually end up getting tons of salmon berries off a bush with a high foraging skill. Look at the survival burger here. Similar to the pancake, however, it gives plus three to foraging, which is really good. To make it, you just need bread, cave carrot, and eggplant. And those materials are pretty easy to save up on. If you want cave carrots, just go into the mines with a hoe, just start hoeing the ground open, you'll have cave carrots galore. Plus three foraging is really nice. Again, it's gonna increase your foraging level, which is gonna increase the quality of the foragements you get. Now we all know that we can easily unlock the botanist profession, which means all forageables are quality purple. But what if you don't have max out foraging? You know, what if you have level eight or level nine? We all know how hard foraging is to max out. It can take a very, very long time as trees don't give a whole lot of foraging XP. So the survival burger is another way to get your lovely high quality forageable items. Next up, let's talk about the tropical curry, the best foraging item in the game. To make it, you just need a coconut, a pineapple, and a hot pepper. This gives a whopping plus four to foraging. Cook that with a key seasoning, that is a plus five to foraging. All you need is 2,000 gold to purchase the recipe from Gus. And plus five foraging with a key seasoning with max out foraging gives plus 15 foraging. So if you have plus 15 foraging, you are going to get the most berries from any bush. You are going to get the highest quality of items from the ground. You will be an unstoppable foraging machine. The tropical curry can be difficult to get because Gus isn't always at the beach on Ginger Island to sell the recipe. He is part of a rotating stock of, I suppose, Stardew Valley humans <laughs> that board the boat every day. And sometimes it could take weeks or even months for Gus to board the boat. So rule of thumb, if you see Gus board the boat, by all means get the recipe off him straight away. Let's look at the top five meals for energy. So there's many meals in this game that give energy, but what are the top five? Well, we have a lovely comprehensive list right here for you. So starting with number one, we have the lovely overpowered fruit salad. Now the fruit salad is by far the best energy item in the game by far it gives plus 473 energy if cooked with a key seasoning you cannot beat it you absolutely cannot beat it the fruit salad also gives a nice bit of health too plus 212 but the energy it gives is absolutely top tier it is hands down the best energy item in the game to make a fruit salad all you need is a blueberry an apricot and a melon you can very easily get those in the farm and you get the apricot from an apricot tree stick one inside your greenhouse and you can make these to your heart's content you'll never have to go and buy energy foods again ever the fruit salad will always sort you out the second best energy food in the game believe it or not is the iridium goats cheese and it isn't just great for energy it is also magnificent for health but look at the energy here plus 325 energy that is insane so if you don't have the luxury of making fruit salads and you have lots of goats on the farm, then turn their lovely milk into cheese and put that cheese right down in the cellar and you will be good to go. The plus 146 health is also really good. I mean, the health might seem small compared to the energy it gives, but plus 146 health is actually really nice. Let's take it right now just to show you how much health it gives. And that puts us right back up to the top. So you absolutely can't go wrong with Iridium Star Goat's cheese if you don't have the luxury of making fruit salads. The next overpowered recipe we are going to talk about today, believe it or not, is the pink cake. The pink cake boasts 250 energy and 112 health, which is absolutely amazing. All you need to make this 
is melon, sugar, wheat flour and any sort of egg, even a white egg will do the job. You can bang out these pink eggs no problem at all. So most of the greens you can buy from Pierre, melons you can just grow those in summer, and eggs, just get a coop together with some chickens. You'll have no problem mass producing these pink cakes. Pink cakes, are, if you don't have goats, go for pink cakes, you know. If you don't have any animals at all, go for the fruit salads. You can't go wrong. Let's talk about the red plate. Cabbage and radish, which means you won't get your hands on this until year two. But it gives 240 energy, 108 health. But more importantly, look at the max energy plus 50. That's absolutely huge. That will surge your energy right up to the top, meaning... You can mine, cut down trees or fish for days without having to take any sort of foods to replenish your energy. The red plate will have you covered. So with the red plate, you do need a year two cabbage because Pierre doesn't give you those in year one. Now you could get lucky. You might get a seed off the traveling cart NPC, but is highly unlikely. So that is the fourth best energy food in the game, the red plate. Let's just take a red plate right now and watch our energy go right up to the top. Amazing. And the reason why it didn't go to the top is because it gave us maximum energy on top of that. So look how big our energy bar is now. It's absolutely huge. The next recipe we're going to talk about today is the chowder. You just need a clam and any sort of milk to make chowder. Now it gives 225 energy, which is again huge, 101 health. But it also gives a plus one to fishing, which is actually pretty nice. Now it might not be the most luxurious fishing buffer to take because you can very easily trump it with the trout soup. But in terms of energy and health, it's really good. So we're just going to do a bit of fishing here. We have maxed out fishing with the plus one, so we get a slightly bigger fishing bar. But again, the energy you get from the chowder is absolutely not into snow fat. So if you have some clams lying around the house, if you've got some milk lying around the place, treat yourself to some nice chowder, which is a really nice energy food. Now, there are lots of dishes in this game that give good energy, but chowder is really easy to make if you have been saving up on your clams. You can very easily pick up clams off the beach. You can get them in crab pots as well. So that is the end of the recipe video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like this kind of video, let me know in the comments. You can always look at more cool recipes that you might not be aware of. We're going to upload the next Stardew Valley in the next couple of days as per usual. So stay tuned for that. And I hope to see you in the streams that we're going to do as well. So I hope you all have a great day. Bye for now.